Hi everyone. In this video we're going to be looking at the trigonometric and polar forms of a complex number. There are many occasions where these forms can be tremendously useful. Are you ready? Let's go. Complex numbers are expressions of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the imaginary unit, the square root of minus 1. What we need to understand is how a complex number z equal to a plus bi has certain geometric properties. A complex number corresponds to a point in the plane ab. So let's go ahead and show this. We draw some axes and mark the point AB. This is the point associated with our complex number. And this then would be our position vector. The modulus of Z is defined as the modulus of its position vector. Denoted by Z between bars, it's equal to the length of this vector. The argument is defined as the angle formed by the position vector and the positive part of the x-axis. We'll represent it by the angle alpha. Now let's obtain expressions for the modulus and argument of z. We draw a vertical line segment. Notice that we have a right triangle. And as this is the point AB, this side represents A, and this side measures B. We'll draw the right triangle separately to make it clear. Now we can apply Pythagoras' theorem. The hypotenuse, which is the modulus of Z, squared, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. In other words, A squared plus B squared. So, the modulus of Z equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. As for the argument alpha, its tangent is represented by the opposite side b divided by the adjacent side a. From this expression, we can calculate the argument of a complex number, but we must take into account the quadrant in which the point ab is located and work with the reduction of this to the first quadrant. Now we go on to obtain the trigonometric form and the polar form. To do this, we calculate the sine and cosine of alpha. The cosine of alpha is the adjacent side A divided by the hypotenuse, which is the modulus of Z. Rearranging this, we have that the modulus of Z times cosine alpha is equal to A or turning this around, A equals the modulus of Z times cosine alpha. Now for the sine of alpha, it's equal to the opposite side B divided by the hypotenuse, which is again the modulus of Z. Rearranging this, we obtain that the modulus of Z times sine alpha is equal to B, or turning this around, B is equal to the modulus of Z times sine alpha. Remember that Z is A plus BI. So let's substitute in this the expressions we've obtained for A and B. We then get A, which is the modulus of Z times cosine alpha, plus B, which is the modulus of Z times sine alpha, times I. Then we take out the common factor, the modulus of Z, to get the modulus of Z times cosine alpha plus I times sine alpha. So we have that z is equal to the modulus of z times cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. And this is the trigonometric form of the complex number z. Notice that to obtain the trigonometric form of a complex number z, all we need is its modulus, the modulus of z, and its argument, alpha. The polar form of z just involves writing these two quantities, the modulus of z and the argument of z, in this way. Modulus of z sub alpha. It's as simple as that. 
As I said to begin with, these ways of expressing complex numbers can be extremely useful. For example, they enable multiplications, divisions, powers and roots of complex numbers to be calculated very easily. In the case of multiplication, if we work with the polar form, we have two complex numbers, Z1 and Z2, specified by their polar coordinates, which are the modulus of Z1 and alpha 1, and the modulus of Z2 and alpha 2. If we then use the formulas for the sine and cosine of the sum of angles, we find that the product of Z1 and Z2 is the complex number with a modulus that's the product of the moduli of Z1 and Z2, the modulus of Z1 times the modulus of Z2, and an argument that's the sum of the arguments alpha 1 plus alpha 2. For division, it's very similar. Using the formulas for the sine and the cosine of the subtraction of angles, we get that Z1 divided by Z2 is the complex number with a modulus that's the quotient of the moduli, and an argument that's the difference of the arguments. Thanks to trigonometry, it really is that simple. Also repeatedly applying the formula for the product, we obtain an expression for the power of a complex number in polar form. Z to the n is the complex number with a modulus equal to the modulus of Z to the n, and an argument that's just n times alpha. This expression is known as de Moivre's formula. There's also a formula for the root of a complex number, or in general the nth root. It can be deduced from the formula for the power of a complex number, as we'll see in a future video. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, leave any comments you have below, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, and we'll continue to give you the videos that you deserve. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.